Christine Lagarde says she finds the slow pace of decision-making in Europe frustrating. She's been an advocate for strengthening economic fundamentals in good times, something that Europe seemingly has largely failed to do. Now, of course, Christine Lagarde's preparing to take over as president of the European Central Bank. To understand how she will take the ECB forward, we must first go back to 2011, when Christine Lagarde took over the helm of the IMF. At the time, the institution was in crisis. Speaking to me at IMF headquarters, she told me what she found. I found staff very keen to adopt a vision, to move forward, to turn a page, and to be of service again. And that was um, a fantastic uh, support for me to launch the effort of opening the doors, opening the windows, putting a more, more clarity, more focus, and um, changing uh, the, the narrative of the IMF. It had been badly damaged in the sense of uh, a loss of morale here. There was, morale was poor. D don't forget, uh, Richard, that for three years they had been on the battlefield day in, day out because the financial crisis had been a major um, development around the world, but a major, major event for the IMF. They all had to get on, on board, they had to um, develop programs to put in place uh, support packages uh, to get financing from the international community. So there was an element of fatigue about, you know, having done that for, th for the last three years. And then, of course, there was the crisis of management because my predecessor, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, had his, um, uh, you know, personal uh, issues that, that created chaos in this institution for a short period of time, luckily. Uh, but but it, was, it was difficult at that time, yes. And you, you arrive here and you immediately face and fall into the debt crisis in Europe, the sovereign debt crisis from Europe. Now, you know all the participants on the other side, so it's not like you're a stranger, but you're coming at it from a very different angle from the IMF, aren't you? I, I, I change side of the table from being a Minister of Finance faced with the financial crisis and then the sovereign debt crisis in Europe. I moved to the other side, which was head of the IMF and possibly having to help some of those countries, which we eventually did, you know, from Portugal, to Cyprus, to Ireland, to Greece, uh, Latvia, and uh, a few others. Uh, we, we had to, to rescue, rescue those countries. Did you ever fear, seriously fear, the euro would collapse? Yes. Yes, I, f I feared, we, I think I wasn't the only one, but I feared that the euro would collapse at a time and during a night, actually, when we were uh, scrambling uh, to put enough funding together uh, in order to uh, rescue the, the euro area and the euro as a currency. It was before I was head of the IMF. It was just shortly before that. And um, I'll, n I'll never forget that night. It was a night when we were working hard, having more differences than uh, in common, and where we could see the clock tick, 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 and we knew that the Australian market was opening, and then it was, well, it was the, then the Tokyo market, and then Hong Kong, and, and the clock was ticking, and we couldn't find agreement. And it was very shortly before the European markets uh, opened that eventually we found what then became the European stability mechanism with $500 billion at the time, euros, sorry. When you get to the Greece crisis, of course, your, the perception of your role is very different, particularly in Greece. Does that hurt? It was a difficult... Um, relationship and it's one where I started as a, as a finance minister and moved to the other side uh, of the creditors as head of the IMF and um, it was uh, difficult because there was little ownership in Greece of what was to be done. Uh, it's a time when I think we all had a serious fear that the Eurozone could actually um, implode because if Greece had left the Eurozone, then there was a huge big question mark as to the solidity of that monetary zone and the Eurozone. Did you ever get angry or frustrated that the Eurozone was built so badly? During that time, it became clear they had built a house with leaking roofs, poor plumbing and dodgy foundations. I think you're going over the top here, Richard, uh, because it's a house which is a unique construction 
never ever in the world and in the history of the world have 19 countries decided to put together their currency sovereignty together and develop fiscal common base banking union and all the rest of it so it's an unbelievable experiment which is still ongoing i tell you what has made me sometimes angry and and frustrated it's the speed at which decisions are made to strengthen that construction and to reinforce the foundations because eventually the Europeans will get there but it will be you know taking an excruciating amount of time and delay and 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 divergence before they eventually get to what is needed and I can see right from the get-go what is needed and I'm sure that others do but between the political tension and the restrictions and the issue at home and the domestic policies it takes a lot of effort and time which of course the markets are looking with interest because in the meantime it weakens and strengthens but somebody makes money along the way.